Wireless technology has become an important part of every type of oil and gas site, from refineries to pipeline sites and oil fields. The challenge is deciding on the right kind of wireless, whether to deploy Wi-Fi, Wi-Heart, LTE, Bluetooth, ISA 100, or multiple other wireless options. I'm Roland Plett, and in this video, I'll help you position each of these technologies for their most valuable use cases so that you're not frustrated by using the wrong tool for the job that you have to do. We have a lot of history with Wi-Fi, and it's a natural choice because so many of the devices we use every day depend on Wi-Fi for connection. This works well for all IT and OT applications like work orders and procedure documentation and much more. Wi-Fi is relatively inexpensive and doesn't require any special spectrum license to operate. This makes it easy to deploy initially. But we've seen a few challenges with Wi-Fi in oil and gas sites. Wi-Fi can drop packets in noisy RF environments with a lot of metal, like a refinery. If you need to cover a large oil field or even lay down yards, you'll need a lot of access points to get into every corner. These two requirements of coverage and reliability start to push operators towards other wireless technologies. And this is what I'd like to talk about next. The control system world recognized these challenges with the Wi-Fi standard a while ago. And because of this, two similar industrial wireless standards have emerged that specifically serve the control system world. The first is wireless heart, which operates in the same spectrum as early Wi-Fi systems. It has duplication and delivery checks built in to ensure that the reliability of control system flows exists. The second is a broader industry standard set out by the International Standard for Automation, or ISA. Their wireless standard is part of the ISA 100 committee and also solves multiple industrial wireless requirements. Both of these standards are widely used for industrial wireless communication, like connecting sensors and actuators to control systems. Honeywell and Emerson are two leaders in this industrial wireless technology. Both of them have partnered with Cisco to deploy these as part of an integrated wireless infrastructure. As wireless is proving to be more useful, oil and gas sites are looking for ways to cover as much of their sites as possible. LTE and 5G have large coverage areas. They work well for a large number of devices and have moderate to high data capacity depending on how it's set up. All this sounds kind of ideal, but unfortunately these are complex systems and they can get expensive fast. For example, deploying just one service provider tower can cost millions of dollars. Transforming these large systems into a single site deployment it's not simple, and in most cases, sites need to acquire an operating license from the communications regulator in the area. This complexity has slowed the adoption of this technology, but there are some remote oil fields that have acquired spectrum and the need to have large scale coverage capabilities has moved them in that direction. There is an interesting wireless mesh technology that's been very successful in large scale utility networks. And I actually think it could be very useful in a field of wellheads. This technology came out of the Wisun Alliance and Cisco has very versatile outdoor routers and endpoints that make this very scalable. If you're interested in that mesh technology, let me know. There's one more incredibly useful application for wireless that has saved companies a lot of money especially during shutdowns and turnarounds. During a turnaround, the population of a refinery can more than double, and the number of orders being worked at one time is many times that of a normal operating environment. This means that there are a lot of people moving around and a lot of inventory is being brought on site in preparation for work that needs to be done. The potential for lost time and efficient workflow is huge. Some companies have deployed location tracking, whether it's through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, during this process, and they've saved millions of dollars as a result. Even reducing the shutdown by a few days can easily pay for the added infrastructure. And then after the shutdown, the location tracking can be a game changer for employee safety and equipment retrieval. 
Well, there you have it. That is a whirlwind tour of the wireless technologies most common in oil and gas today. There's so much more to talk about in comparing each of these technologies, and you'll see more from me on each of these technologies in the months to come. But for now, you can continue learning and exploring with the next video. Like and subscribe to the channel to ensure that you get notified about the upcoming videos I'm going to be doing on wireless. Take care.